Lots of people like to collect master sets, but what is the most expensive set to collect? From the Sword and Shield era and the Scarlet and Violet era in English, what are the toughest sets and the most expensive sets to complete? Now, we want to crack packs and pull the biggest bangers, but sometimes we have to buy the cards we need to complete these sets. With some sets having insanely tough pull rates, sometimes it is just better just to buy the cards you want, even though they are silly expensive. So today we're going through the top 10 most expensive Pokemon sets in the Sword and Shield era and the Scarlet and Violet era to complete with some honorable mentions. Let's get into it. Right, starting off with an honorable mention, we have Battle Stars. That's right, Battle Stars with my sleepy boy Tita coming in at a total value of $612. That's a decent amount of money to try and complete a master set of battle stars now i actually have a battle stars master set it's the only set that i have a master set of i went out of my way to make sure i had every single card in this set and it is a relatively cheap set to complete i think when i think when i completed the battle stars master set i think in all in all it probably cost me around about 400 roughly maybe even a little bit less that was before the prices went up of the oh, oh, Tita, you know, the Art oh, Tranitar at $175. I mean, I picked up mine at the time for like 70, 80, if that. Uh, and then the rest of these were cheaper as well. I mean, the Imperialion I probably picked up like 20, 25. The Urshifu was like 40. So a lot of stuff of Battle Stars has been starting to trickle up. But it's relatively cheap. I say cheap. <laughs> Coming in at $612. The next honorable mention we have is Silver Tempest at $720. Quite interesting because 200 over 200 dollars of that is the lugia if you take the lugia out of it this set is like 500 dollars which is actually pretty crazy same with like the battle stars right you take the t-tar out it's a really really cheap set so this set you know it is decent pull rates is trainer gallery the lugia is kind of carrying this set 720 dollars is actually less than i thought i thought it'd be more than this uh, but a lot of the cards in silver tempest have dropped in value due to reprints um, so we saw a lot of the old arts drop in value. That's why we're starting to see some, you know, trainer gallery cards and even some rainbows starting to climb their way up through the list in Silver Tempest. Then we have another honorable mention, which is Temporal Forces. Temporal Forces is $746 in value. This is a really interesting one because this set has been you know, on the uptick quite well. It's been doing pretty well. Uh, you know with, with holding card values and things like that there's no real like super duper crazy expensive cards we just saw from like the tyranitar and the lugia we do have the raging bolt sitting at the moment at just over a hundred dollars with the iron crown at just over 60 then after that you got the walking wake and so on so that's not too bad you know our first skull and violet era set you know relatively tough pull rates as well and pretty good chase cards sitting at 750 dollars so a little bit more pricey but doesn't quite make the top 10 Another honorable mention we have is Paradox Rift, coming in at $793. Nearly $800 for this set. Again, this is another one where you know, we look at nearly $800, but there's no silly expensive chase card, right? We've got the Roaring Moon at 62 There's a lot of cards in this set which hold relatively good value across the board, and that's really what you want to see, right? That's actually a sign of a good, strong set, is when you have so many cards that make it worth opening up booster packs and i think that is a very very good thing it's got very good strong illustration rares and very good strong special illustration rares even though there's not one crazy chase card this set is still doing reasonably well better than silver tempest you know better than temporal forces at 800 dollars. that's a really good sign but doesn't quite make the top 10 and missing out in the top 10 is pokemon 151 that's crazy you know 151 doesn't even make it in the top 10 at 805 dollars only a little bit more than paradox rift everyone keeps going on about how amazing this set is and the value of this set i did a video recently on it not holding up guys it really isn't pokemon 151 as far as a hard standpoint goes isn't doing very well you know even though seal product is getting more and more expensive it's getting harder hard to get hold of the single card prices outside of the charizard is performing very very poorly so we're looking at your know, 120 dollars 800 you know you could say oh yeah but it's a holiday set it's not a main set so it's doing reasonably well i mean yeah you could have the argument that it's got a few cards again uh, i would say which is more than the price of a pack but it really isn't right the price of the pack is just getting to the point where it's going to be soon be not worth open up unless a reprint comes so it's going to be interesting to see where this goes in the future but right now 805 dollars missing out on the top 10. all right coming at number 10 power day evolved scarlet and violet doing pretty well with power Day evolved at 858 
dollars that is pretty reasonable with the fish carrying it across with over a hundred dollars i mean it's got a good value across the board here as well you know you got the iono at 77 you got my boy t tar at 44 and you got other cards you know right at 42 shen pao holding strong you've got a bunch of cards that are slowly going up in value and are definitely worth cracking a pack for i mean if i keep scrolling down all of these are more than a price of a pack like all of these cards like price of a pack is like three dollars we're gonna keep going we're gonna keep going right here we go here 299 so all of these cards are worth more than the price of entry more than the price of a pack that to me is a sign of a strong set and we've already seen it perform very well 850 dollars i expect this to go up over time you know especially if there's not gonna be any more reprints there might be of course so these might fall but still pretty good at number 10. in number nine we have a brilliant stars brilliant stars is a fantastic set like really really good 902 dollars doesn't quite reach a thousand dollars just yet it might do though as it does have some big performing cards we do have the big oh charizard at 200 dollars which is a big chunk of the set then the next card for that is the rainbow charizard at 56 so again not really doing the best arceus at 45 and then we have the evolutions which are on the uprise right there their prices are ticking up so i expect them to help push this set moving forward this set's no longer in print booster boxes are on the rise single card prices especially the charizard has basically doubled in value over the past couple of months we started to see some of the other cards climb up along with the charizard so i wouldn't be surprised if this set overall would start to cost around about a thousand dollars to complete in the future i do expect the brilliant star prices to continue to climb now it's our print and the demand for these cards is there i mean it was such a great set had good pull rates but now it's out of print undersea climbs and i expect it to climb even more in number eight we have power day and fates relatively new set holiday set let's take a look you know when we when i looked at shining fates shining fates was like 300 dollars this is 950 this is nearly three times the value of shining fates this is how good power day and fates is it genuinely is a really strong performing holiday set you got the big charizard coming in 110 dollars then the Mew coming in at 88, and then you got the God of War and the Pikachu and stuff. It's the baby shinies that help carry this set. Like Hidden Fates, it's the baby shinies that are holding a more good value. It's not like Shining Fates, where Shining Fates baby shinies were pretty poor. This set, however, is doing very well. And then you got a big chase card, right? I compare it to Shining Fates because it was the last one, right? Shining Fates, you had the Charizard. Outside the Charizard, nothing. You have the Mew here, you got the God of War, you got the Iono. You know, we scroll further down, you can see these baby shinies holding somewhat good value. And on top of that, you've got some good special illustration rares with like the Arvin doing pretty well. The gold cards are holding down quite well. And again, the value of price of a pack. Pack of Palais and Fakes right now is like $4. We scroll down, and how far do we scroll until we see $4? By far, you know, uh, about here. So the Armour Rouge is about $4. So all of these cards are more than the price of a pack which makes it very very fun and tempting to open and it's got very good pull rates as well 150 very good next up we have astral radiance not quite broken the thousand dollar price barrier yet astral radiance doing very well this one quite surprised me when i put this list together i was very surprised that astral radiance is actually this higher up it very good performance set the champ 180 dollars pretty strong then you got the starmy which is a fantastic training gallery card and this set has some amazing old arts and quite a few and that does help the set quite a lot and i really rate that and the same with the guard charm good strong trainer gallery in my opinion has got one of the stronger trainer galleries out of the sword and shield era which does help it quite a lot and then on top of it, you've got the old arts and then you've got the big you know trainer cards like the iridar some really nice rainbows and gold cards that can be found in this set as well along with the rising value of some of these trainer gallery cards which is overall helping the overall value of astral radiance even though booster boxes are getting more expensive your card prices are still moving but overall this is a really strong set even though it hasn't reached a thousand dollars it is still doing relatively well just missing out on the top five we have crown zenith coming in at just over a thousand dollars this is a fantastic set with some amazing cards in it so in crown zenith you do have the gold v stars along with the mewtwo which is like the honorary gold uh v star doing very well right giratina 136 arceus sitting at 95 then you got the power cure at 70 they got the mewtwo nearly at 70 and the dialga at 60 then you got a bunch of other cards in this set which are holding good value or going up as well you've got the leafy on the glaceon legendary doggos 
a lot of these cards are doing pretty well. So let's take a look at cards of like the price of a pack. The price of a pack is around about four to five dollars. You're doing pretty well, right? Most of these, pretty much all of these are over four dollars. So like all of this is very good that you can pull. And the fact is you have these big top end cards as well. Everybody loves Crown Zenith. I expect this to continue to climb. It is the last of the Sword and Shield era. It's now out of print. This is going to be really interesting to see how things go with Crown Zenith. Because I do genuinely feel like this could be one of the top sets in the Sword and Shield era. And, you know, just missing out on the top five spot is a bit rough, but still over $1,000. It's only going to go up. Coming at number five, we have the newest set, Twilight Masquerade. Coming in at $1,046. This set has come out of the gates really, really strong. Uh, this is the best performing Scarlet and Violet era set uh, by a considerable margin. I mean, what the next one was Powder Evolved, and we know Powder Evolved, how good Powder Evolved's doing. Yeah, we got the Greninja holding down quite a lot with the Carmine. These two combined are absolutely you know, crushing it for this set. You know, $150, $126. And then with the Perrin as well at 82. And then you've got to look at the EV and the Ursh Luna. And you've got a lot of playable cards that are holding good value. With the Buddy Buddy Poffin coming in with the gold. And the pull rates as well, guys. The pull rates of this set is so tough. The toughest in the Scarlet and Violet era. Which will help keep the value in the big chase cards. So I do expect this set to perform very, very well. And even then, again, rolling down. How many, you know, from the price of a pack? I would say you're probably looking around about here. You're looking at so many cards maybe 30 40 plus cards or more that are more than the price of a pack which is very very good and especially with such big top end cards this set you know reprint of course may affect this and i do expect this to drop further down the list but the top pull rates will keep it up there with some of the big top sets speaking of big top sets in a number four we have lost origin at $1,070, and just a little bit more than Twilight Masquerade, with the Giratina pretty much carrying this set. Don't get me wrong, the Aerodactyl is great and it's doing pretty well, but it is the Giratina that is carrying this set. Without the Giratina, this set would be around about $600, which would be off this list completely. So yeah, Giratina is doing wonders for this set. Aerodactyl, of course, is doing pretty well, $138. And then you've got some good trainer gallery cards, some okay-ish old arts. They're holding some additional value as well. Some good strong rainbows have been performing. But the rest of the set is reasonably cheap, with a lot of stuff being under $10. So this is one of these sets, probably seems like Burning Shadows, where it's like, it is pretty much the Giratina or Bust. Yeah, fair enough, you're the Aerodactyl as well, but it's pretty much for the Giratina. So this set is doing reasonably well. Just missing out on the top three. Uh, I mean, I do expect this to potentially go up over time. I expect the other cards apart from Giratina to climb. And I probably expect the Giratina to fall a bit. So we might see it fall out of the top five spot in the future. But we'll have to wait and see. Right, well, coming to the top three, we have Fusion Strike, best set ever created. This set is doing very well. $1,133. It is the Gengar, the big boy Gengar. The Espeon's doing very well. The Mew has now broke $100, which is very impressive. And then we have the Mew V at 58 and the Celebi, of course, doing very well now, sitting at nearly 50. But then we've got some Rainbows doing pretty well, like the Rainbow Mew V Max sitting at 40 is doing pretty well. A few other alt arts in this set, the Greedy Greedent. But then after that, it pretty much drops in value. Compared to a lot of the Scarlet and Violet era sets, where like the value of the set is spread out across a whole bunch of cards. A lot of the Sword and Shield era sets is literally just these two one or two real big chase cards, and then all the rest is pretty poor. And we're seeing that kind of with this set, right? So either Gengar, Espeon, and I guess the Mew to some extent. The Gengar and the Espeon really, really carrying this set as well. But it is carrying it enough to make it into the top three at just over $1,100, which is very, very impressive. In at number two, missing out on the top spot is Chilling Rain at $1,643. A huge jump compared to Fusion Strike. A lot of money is being put into Chillum Rain, and that is because it has an absolute ton of old arts. It is the second largest amount of old arts in the Sword and Shield era, and that's helping it out a hell of a lot. So we're looking at the Blaziken Flaming Chicken KFC at $400 now. Again, so we're pretty much more than the Gengar, which is very impressive. And you know, the Moltres is coming at $172. Shadow Rider Calyrex has been doing very well at $100. That's climbed quite a bit. Snorlax has always held his value pretty much. The Galarian Rapidash being in the top five most expensive. Who would have thought? And then on top of that, the Articuno, my favorite card in the whole of the Sword and Shield era, doing very well 
and that has been going up in value now overtaking the Zorora V and you're just going to keep going look at all these alt arts you got some good trainer cards you got some good rainbows you got some good strong gold cards it's just the alt arts they're carrying this set absolutely and you know we've been seeing now a lot of Scarlet and Violet of sets that have lots of good special illustration rares this set though from Sword and Shield is doing very well but miss on the top spot we can kind of guess who's going to be number one and then evolving skies at number one at three thousand eight hundred and ninety seven dollars nearly four thousand more than double the cost of chilling rain this set is ridiculously expensive to complete with booster boxes being 700 plus things are getting crazy the umbreon at over 900 dollars is more than most sets that's how crazy this card is then you got the rayquaza at 460 leafion at 340 glaceon at 230 sylveon at 220 even the umbreon at 180 things are getting expensive right and if i scroll further down this set has the highest amount of ours we've got some rainbows up there in the mix as well like all the evolutions and if i keep scrolling We've got a lot of cards that are over like the price of a normal booster pack, but the problem is with Volvon Skies is it's getting so expensive. You're looking over about 15 plus a pack. So, you know, we start scrolling back up to where that 15 is. But the top end is so big and so heavy that people want that chase. That's why people still open up Volvon Skies for the hunt for these top 10 cards because they all fetch a pretty price tag. You know, top 10 with the 10th card being $100 is absolutely bonkers like stupid crazy but yeah if you do want to get a whole set of evolving skies it sounds weird to say but it is cheaper to just buy a master set than to open up what five booster boxes six booster boxes of uh of evolving skies a case let's say you open up a case of evolving skies there's no way would you get anywhere near close to this set it'll be better just to buy a master set there you have it those are the top 10 most expensive sword and shield and scarlet and violet era sets to complete with some honorable mentions really interesting the ones that surprised me the most was the sets like astral radiance astral radiance is doing very well twilight masquerade hey look people hated it people didn't like it it's proven everybody wrong of how strong it's performing paradox rift is doing very well Paddy revolves doing very well a lot of the sword and shield era sets of course are going to be doing very well anyway with a lot of the big chase cards climbing value as we've been seeing but a lot of those big cards are starting to plateau that's why we might see a little bit of a stagnation in value but some of the other cards in the set might start to compensate for that and start climbing up as well as we started to see with a lot of the trainer gallery cards and rainbows and gold cards as well moving up but you know we could see some more scarlet and violet era sets slowly climb up this list the older and older they get which is quite interesting palladium fates has done incredibly well it's like nearly three times the value of you know shining fates its predecessor it is doing very well a lot of great sets of course the and skies had to take the number one top spot at nearly four thousand dollars to complete and that will go up which is very, very scary. But if you made this far into the video, guys, and you've enjoyed it, make sure to smash the like button, make sure to subscribe for more Pokemon content. Let me know your thoughts about these sets in general. How expensive they are. Do you have any master sets? I have Battle Stars. So that's pretty much it. I don't really know which one I want to go for next. But there are loads of other Scarlet and Violet era sets and Sword and Shield era sets that didn't make this list. You know, where's Pokemon Go? Surely that should have been up here, right? You know what I mean? But no, there are some really poor performing sets that couldn't even make it, especially with Battle Stars, which was arguably deemed as a poor performing set and a weak set still went up numbers still doing pretty well there's a big drop and a big gap between the next few sets after battle stars so yeah a bunch of honorable mentions but a lot of room to grow it'd be interesting to come back to this in the future and see where things lie especially when we start getting more and more sets coming out in the scarlet and violet era of course yeah really really interesting but if you want to know what's going on in the pokemon market right now then make sure to click the video on screen if you want more pokemon content guys make sure you hit that subscribe button all right guys that's it from me in today's video thank you all so much for watching as always you guys are legends and i'll see you in the next one